Compound events can either be independent of each other or dependent on each other. And we are going to learn the difference. Independent events, that the occurrence of one event does not affect the likelihood that the other one will occur. So in this case, we've got a spinner and we are going to spin that and then flip this coin. What is the probability of spinning a prime number and flipping tails? So my probability of flipping tails is one and two. I can either have heads or tails, so I've got two possible outcomes, and one of them is tails. Prime number, I've got five and two and three. One is not considered a prime number, even though it can only be multiplied by itself in one. It's not considered a prime number. So we have got five possible outcomes, one, two, three, four, five, and three of them are a prime number. So when we have events like this, if we are trying to find the probability of flipping or of, of spinning a, a prime number and then flipping a coin, we can use this, we can multiply those together, the probability of the first times the probability of the second, and we get three in 10. So the probability of spinning a prime number and then flipping tails is three in 10. They don't affect each other, they have nothing to do with each other other than they are in the same experiment, and so they are independent of each other, and the probability of that is 3 in 10. Alright, events are dependent events if the occurrence of one event does affect the occurrence of the other. And an example of that, people are randomly chosen to be game show contestants from an audience of 100 people. You are with five of your relatives and six other friends. What is the probability that one of your relatives is chosen first? And then one of your friends is chosen second. So there are 100 possible outcomes when no one has gotten chosen yet. The probability of one of my relatives being chosen first is five out of 100 because I have five relatives out of 100 people there. And the probability of one of my friends being chosen, chosen is six out of 100. However, it says, what is the probability that one of your relatives is chosen first and then one of your friends is chosen second? So one of my relatives has been chosen. That's five and 10. However, when this happens when I'm waiting for one of my friends to be chosen. It is actually six out of 99 because one of my relatives is already on the stage. So I only have 99 possible outcomes at that point. So it changes the number of possible outcomes. So we multiply those together and we would get the probability of this event happening, a relative and then a friend. All right, a student randomly guesses the answer for each of the multiple choice questions. What is the probability of answering all three questions correctly? So choosing one of these does not affect choosing the other. So this is a dependent event. So the likelihood that they're going to choose correctly in this first question, there are one, two, three, four, five. So it's one and five. The likelihood of the second question is one, two, still 1 in 5. The likelihood of this third question is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1 in 5. So what is the probability of answering all three questions correctly? That is going to be 1 in 5 times 1 in 5 times 1 in 5. 1 times 1 in times 1 is 1. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. So it is one in 125. Probably why you should study for your test, because just guessing is not gonna get you a very good score. So those are, I may have said those are dependent. I meant independent. Those events are independent. They do not affect each other. All right. Using the formula for probability of independent events. We already did this. 
One fifth times one fifth times one fifth is one over one twenty-five. All right, if we are using the fundamental counting principle, there are five choices to each question, so there are five times five times five equals 125 possible outcomes. And there's only one way to answer all the questions correctly. So it would also be one in 125. The truth is, is these two methods are exactly the same. You are just thinking about them totally differently. Here you're thinking, okay, I have five possible outcomes for each one. Five times five times five, times five is 125. Here I have one possible answer for each one. One times one times one is one. Where here it looks like you are multiplying fractions. So you, I promise that is a five. So you are multiplying here. One times one times one is one. Five times five times five is 125. They are the same exact method. They call them different methods because you're thinking about them different, but you really are doing the same thing. All right, that is it for independent and dependent.